going to do is I want you to look, and up here, just up here to the top, I'm going to write what rule number, I like R1, R2. Let's look at this first one here. To probably do this problem, which uh, rule do you think we're going to use? One, two, three, four, five, or six? What does one deal with? One says the opposite sides are parallel. Does that help me write an equation towards either one of these? That really doesn't help me, does it? What does the second one say? So it says this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to that. Does that help me write an equation to be able to find that? Yes. Guess what? You're going to use rule two here. And what are the two equations you would write? Let's see. That would mean that 2a is equal to what? 3a minus 5, and that 2b minus 1 is equal to what? Okay, that's the geometry in this, that problem. That's it. And don't worry about writing this down, guys. I'm going to post this. this. This, In fact, all of these examples worked out are already posted to Canvas. So watch this along with me and write it down after you get done. That way we can get through it faster. Now, so we've done this one. Now let's look at number two. Here I was dealing, what does this represent? 2a. It represents the length of this what? Side, does it not? When it has a degree sign, what's it usually referring to? The angle, correct? So here I'm dealing with lengths of sides. Here I'm dealing with what? Look at those six things. One and two deal with sides. What does three and four talk about? Angle. Oh. So is there a good chance we're going to use three or four? Or both? Well, to create, we're going to need to create equations, right? Or we're going to, what does it say? Number three says what? Rule three says that what? Opposite angles are congruent. So this is congruent to that, and that's congruent to that. Does that help me find y or x? It tells me right now what y is, doesn't it? However, it doesn't necessarily help me find x, does it? But what about rule four? What does it say? So if they're beside each other, they add to 180, right? Does that help me find x? Mm -hmm. I know that these two have to add what? So we're going to use rule 4 as well. So I know that what? Uh, x is equal to what? We're going to take 180 and subtract 44. x is equal to what? 136. So we just applied those rules, didn't we? Now... Number three, what's it dealing with? Okay, first one dealt with sides, this one's angles. Now we're dealing with, what do you see drawn that wasn't drawn before? The diagonals. So what rules talk about diagonals? Five or six. Only one of them has two of them in there, so I might lean towards that one. What does it say? What does that rule five say? So that means this is congruent to that, and that's congruent to that. Does that help me in this case? So it's rule 5. So what would my two equations be? x minus 2 is equal to what? What else? I think you guys could solve those equations, couldn't you? So again, the, what, I'm do, what I basically did right here, other than saying 180 minus 44, this is the geometry in these problems. There's really not a whole lot to the geometry part, is it? The geometry part is being able to apply those theorems, those statements. Here. What's this one the exact same as? It's number one. It's exact same as number one, so we'll use rule two. The only difference is we just changed what each one was, right? So I'd have 9b plus 8 equal to what? 10b plus 1. What would my other equation be? It's not so bad, is it? Okay. Let's look at number five. What am I dealing with here? What does it look a lot like? Which one does it look like? Number two. two. Just because I'm using red doesn't mean it looks like Christmas. It looks like a lot like number two, doesn't it? I gave you something about three of the four angles, and they're both parallelograms. So I bet you'd be pretty good off saying you're probably going to use rule three and rule what? First of all, these two are congruent. So y plus 9 has to equal what? 3x. However, does that help me find either y or x? Huh? No. Well, in this one, though, I said these two add to 180. 
So I could say that x plus 8 plus y plus 9 equals 180. However, what's the problem with that as well? I have x's and y's here. I have x's and y's. Is there another equation I could write here? What do these two have to do? As you go around, the next one, they always add to 180, doesn't it? X plus so 8 plus, plus, eight plus equals 180. Which one of these does the most good for me? The bottom one, because I could solve this for what? I'd have 4x plus 8 is equal to 180. Subtract 8. And I'd have 4x is equal to 172 divided by 4. I'd find that x is equal to 43. This was the algebra part. Well, then I can go to either one of these two equations and just plug what back in for x? And whatever I get from 3 times 43, which is 129, I subtract 9 from it, and so y is 100 and what? That's not so terrible, is it? What about number 6? What rule are we using here? Because it's diagonals and they're cut in half. So my two equations would be 1, 4x minus 2 is equal to what? x plus 10. And what would the other one be? y plus 5 is equal to what? 3y minus 1. So when you sit here and look at those, all it is is just applying what? Algebra. Or using algebra, but applying those six facts, isn't it? It's going to reinforce, okay, if it's a parallelogram, these things happen. Now, you're not going to have to use all six things usually for the same problem, are you? You're going to have to look at this problem and say, hey, which of those help me find what I, they want me to find? Whether it be a variable, whether they just say find the measure of this. Questions? Are we okay? What we, do we know how to solve every one of these equations? We good here? Now, one thing I would like to point out that makes this a bad problem. And because I was trying to quickly get through this, if you look up here, it says find the value of each variable. Can anybody tell me why I dislike or why I, I basically, the book made a mistake when they made these? Is because there's only two variables? Nope. The reason being is all they said is this section was about parallelograms. All of this stuff that I was doing is up here is dependent on the fact that each of these are what? Parallelograms. Did they ever state it? No. no. And we've said don't go by what it looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Well, where they made a mistake is what your directions probably should read here, or probably they wanted them to read here, was for each parallelogram, find the value of each variable. That then tells you that each of these are what? Parallelograms. They should have done that. Okay, they did make a mistake. Okay. So is this pretty easy? It's not too bad, is it? You just have to remember all these facts. That in a parallelogram, opposite angles are what? Congruent. Opposite sides are what? Consecutive angles add to? When you're walking around in a circle, if they're next to each other or on top of each other, they add to 180. When you draw the diagonals, what do they do to each other? Cut it in half. If you draw just one diagonal, you make two congruent what? Which means this angle is congruent to this angle, this angle is congruent to this angle, this angle is congruent to this angle, so on and so on, right? Think we can apply those facts? Okay, well, we're going to apply them to... Uh, to do these problems right here. Now, guys, I expect to see all steps and work. I expect to see these equations. As I have told you yesterday, and I went into uh, detail yesterday, it is important that we stay up to date on our algebra skills. A lot of this class is algebra, but you're going to need it a lot next year. 
And I'm just telling you right now. Now, for some people who really struggle with the conceptual part of geometry, you may think Algebra 2 is easy. But for most people, Algebra 2 is hard or more difficult. Is there geometry in Algebra 2? <sighs> yes and no. There's not a lot of, of shapes. But to me, geometry is not shapes. To me, geometry is teaching you to think analytically, use information given to you, and, and so apply because there, because we do go over some facts like uh, some trig stuff in here and some other things. And, and, and they, plus, I think a lot of it is that they think they need to let the mind mature a little before you take algebra two. For instance, I've heard a lot of people that took geometry. Let's say they had problems with geometry as a freshman or something, then took it again as a senior. Because geometry is conceptual, you'd be amazed at how much it's like this was hard three years ago. Just because you get more mature, you're able to, I don't know, you, just the mind matures as well. I mean, you, you think it sounds crazy, but you're, as your body is maturing, your mind is as well. And so, you know, unfortunately, we can't give every math course to you your senior year. You know what I mean? We've got to build up to something.